All right, you guys asked for this. This video is for you. This is a cyber deck that you guys can actually build. After my past like dual screen computer build, I got over a hundred comments from people who wanted to build their own or buy that one. Unfortunately, it wasn't safe. You could reach in and like touch the fan. There was exposed power. I just couldn't in good conscience show someone how to do that. This one though is a single 3D print, an off the shelf board, off the shelf display. This you can actually do yourself or you can buy this one. I will be listing this on eBay, but watch the full video before you bid because there are some quirks that you should know about. While no money changed hands, I did partner with Iqunix, Kados, KKSB, and Elergo to make this build happen. And for everyone who wanted this thing to run Linux, it runs Linux, and I hate it, and that's the big issue with uh, this entire build. I'll get to that at the end of this video. It's been a disaster. But to start on a more positive note, this is the Iqunix Q66. I confirmed that it's easier to disassemble than the wormhole keyboard, which I liked but was a pain. Unlike the wormhole though, there's not enough room to put anything inside. So I put it back together and I designed this piece that clips perfectly onto the back of the keyboard. You'll be able to download this part from my Thingiverse account, see the description below. Now this is a really large print, so I'll be using the Neptune 3 Plus to print it all in one go, one single piece. This is basically the 3 Pro, but larger. It's like the same thing. If you don't need to go this big, I would just recommend the 3 Pro. I've been able to run the 3 Pro faster and I think it's a better value. But I did design this originally as a bunch of different pieces and I had to assemble them all. And then now that I have this big printer, it's a single part, which is way easier. So there is that perk. I ran this print fast and you'll see it did result in a little bit of Z wobble. So I sand the surface smooth and then spray paint it to make it look a lot nicer. This took about six hours and it's far from perfect, but it's better than my past builds. Now I take the keyboard and to attach the two, all I do is take some double stick tape, uh, put it on the print and then press the two pieces together. It's surprisingly secure. It's not going anywhere, but if you do want to remove this, uh, it won't destroy the keyboard. Onto the internals. I'm using a Kados Vim 4. This single board computer is the same form factor as a Raspberry Pi. It's tiny, but it's more powerful and comes with onboard memory. There's an install wizard that lets you install Android, but I use that wizard to install Linux because my time isn't valuable. I solder leads onto the power button, which is optional. And then it comes with a cooler, but KKSB sent me this nice metal case. I liked the case, but I didn't like the thermal pad. I swapped that for a piece of copper. The other thing about the case is there's no solution for the antenna. So I just routed them outside the case. Now with this case set up and the wire leads going to the power button, it's time to install the board. I feed my USB hub and HDMI cable through these two slots and then slide the board in. Links in the description to all of these cables. The exposed cables make the back ugly, but it means you can unplug them and use this as a PC accessory too. Next I epoxy in a little power button and solder it to the leads of the board. Again, this is optional. Definitely the method that I would recommend, but if you do not know how to solder, you actually have a hole that leads all the way to the power button. And you can take like a carbon rod, or in this case a chopstick, cut it to length and use that as your power button. I glue the USB hub in place so it's not just rattling around, and now it's time to unbox the ultra-wide display. The display comes with this HDMI control board which connects via a ribbon cable. Now I'm just going to jam this into the build, so to keep this from shorting on anything, I cover it with electrical tape. I also taped the ribbon cable in place. I don't want it to get smushed when I installed the display. I used the USB cables in the video description to connect up the keyboard and the power to the HDMI control board. The HDMI cable connects to the control board via an adapter, and then to keep the control board from rattling around, I used some double stick tape. And really, that's basically it with the hardware build. All we have to do is attach the display with some very thin strips of double stick tape. Yes, there are a lot of like adapters and cables hidden under the display, but I want this design to be easy to build without any soldering, and I have accomplished that. Other people can take this design and build off of it. It doesn't draw too much power, so you can make it battery powered. You could run Android and Word docs and make it a typing machine. It could run other single board computers. There are little notches in the back, so you can install a second display if that's something you want to do. I think I've succeeded, at least on the hardware side, in creating a base that other people can use as like a launching point for their own projects. And I also succeeded in reimagining that initial design in a way that's still cyberpunky and futuristic, but yet totally different. All right, so that is the hardware out of the way, onto the software. So this thing runs Ubuntu with the latest version of GNOME, and I have been unsuccessful getting this to scale properly with the 1920 by 510 display. Everything is stretched out in a weird way, and it just doesn't look good. So don't build this or buy this unless you understand how to set custom resolutions in Linux, because uh, the latest version of GNOME uses Wayland instead of 1X, and all the tutorials online use uh, XRandR to set custom resolutions, 
but that doesn't work on Wayland. So I don't know how to make it work. Hopefully someone who's more experienced can comment down below on how to make the latest version of Ubuntu have a custom resolution. So in the end, this is just a hardware tutorial. It's not a complete end-to-end -end tutorial like I was hoping, but I still had a lot of fun with it. It's quite interesting to try to take a complicated one-off design and distill it down into a single part that you can easily you know, download online and assemble yourself. It's more difficult to do a simple design than it is to do something complicated and one-off. And if you want to do one of these yourself and you don't have a 3D printer, I'll 3D print these for you. Um, I don't know what it's going to cost. Uh, just email me and we'll figure out a price. And hopefully you enjoyed watching. Have a good day.